Hey guys, it's Adrian or BHA here bringing you a new video. So I don't know if I'm just late to the game or what, but I ran across this cool dashboard that uh, is run in a Docker container called Heimdall. I hope that's how you pronounce it. I honestly have no idea. Heimdall, that's what we're going to call it. And it uh, is pretty awesome. It's a great way for you to kind of consolidate all of your local, uh, you know, web interfaces, admin interfaces uh, for the various different uh, devices and things that you have running at your house. So like for me, as you can see here, I've got Plex, uh, Proxmox, uh, PFSense for my firewall. I got Portainer for all the Docker containers. Uh, you know, Unify controller uh, for my Wi-Fi. So I have all these different admin interfaces. Uh, my camera in VR. It's a pain to try to remember all of the different uh, web interfaces and what port numbers I use and what their IP addresses are. Uh, I mean, I know it's kind of like bookmarks and you could probably use bookmarks if you would rather. Uh, but to me, I think this is a little bit cleaner and I really like it. I think it's pretty cool. So, uh, I ran across this and I wanted to show you guys, I thought you might really like it. Here we go. All right, so this will run in a Docker container, uh, as I already stated earlier. And of course, uh, we'll run through the whole setup and everything and kind of walk you through what all you have to do and what you're able to do with it. So let's do a quick run through of everything we're going to cover in this video. For starters, we're going to install uh, Heimdall in a, a Docker container. All right, we've got a little bit of a twist for this install. Uh, normally, of course, we use Docker Compose. That's what I use to install all of my Docker containers, but I've decided to try out stacks within Portainer. Uh, and kind of run through the install using that. And of course, it uses the same YAML code that you would normally use in Docker Compose, but of course, we could do it all from the web interface within Portainer. Once we get it installed, then of course, uh, we will just go through some of the configuration, some of the things that you can do uh, with Heimdall. And then of course, uh, lastly, uh, We'll just go through and add some of those web interfaces just to show you how easy it is and uh, some of the things that you can do with it. So let's get started. All right, so again, like I said, we're going to use Stacks in Portainer, but um, it uses the same Docker Compose YAML code that you would normally use. So uh, it should still work about the same if you prefer to use Docker Compose. Um, this same code will work and I'll have it pasted in the description below so that you can just copy and paste it and do whatever uh, you need to with that. So as you can see, I already have it installed, but we're going to go through and run through the full install anyway. Uh, so we'll just create another instance of it that I can go ahead and delete later, but I at least want to be able to show you how all of it works. Uh, so for starters, we'll go create a volume uh, that we're going to use to store our configuration. Uh, I'm just going to call it Heimdall test dash data. Uh, once we do that, we'll jump up to stacks. I'm going to create a test stack here. And this is where you'll paste all of your uh, Docker Compose uh, YAML code here. Now we'll go through everything here. I'm just going to call it Heimdall-Test. Uh, for the image name, we have it listed here. Again, you can copy and paste it. Uh, container name, I'm going to call it Heimdall-Test. Now there are three main environment variables that you will need for this. You need your group ID and user ID for the user account that you are running on your Docker host. By default, it's usually 1000. Um, more than likely that's what yours will be, but you could certainly check it if you needed to. 
Uh, so PG ID equals 1000, PU ID equals 1000, and then of course for the third entry we're going to set our time zone. For me that's America slash Chicago. Now for volumes we're going to point this at the uh, volume that we just created uh, at the start of this section, Heimdall test dash data colon slash config now for ports um, there are two ports that are needed for this 80 and 443 um, I hate to tie those up because those ports are so common so I'm going to do some sort of little port forwarding here we'll map them to a different port I'm going with 11080 uh, for port 80 and then 11443 for 443. And again, you can do it whatever you want. If you're not using 80 and 443, then you're certainly welcome to just use that. For the restart, I'm going to set it to always. And then, of course, we'll scroll down here and deploy uh, the stack here. Give that a second to come back up. We can jump back over to containers. And as you can see there, Heimdall-test. We'll click on that. Everything looks pretty good. Go ahead and click on the logs. And as you can see here, it's still kind of uh, creating everything that it needs to get it up and running so it'll probably take it a couple of minutes uh, in the meantime we'll go ahead and move on to the next step all right so uh, just to kind of go over some of the configuration um, Again, you're going to access this by uh, going to the IP address of your Docker machine and then whatever port number you used uh, for Heimdall. Again, mine was 11080, so I went to 10.10.10.4 colon 11080. And of course, it pulls up this page here. Uh, there's not much to it yet because we have not done anything to it. Uh, so we're going to go down here and we'll click on the settings down here in the bottom corner. As you can see, there's not a whole lot of configuration that you can do, but you can uh, create a custom background. So if you don't want this uh, cool looking uh, background with the uh, hot air balloon, you can change it to whatever you want. You also have the ability to add a search bar at the top. Uh, so if you normally have your homepage set to like Google or something like that and you want to still be able to have uh, Google on this main page, we could add that here. Uh, so you basically enable homepage search and then of course right below that default search provider, there's some options there. I'm going to choose Google here. The other thing I'd like to change is down here at the bottom it says... Uh, link opens in you can choose to have it open in the same tab you can choose to have it open in a new tab you also have the option to basically have it open in the same tab that Heimdall is running so those are a couple different options there I think by default it's set to same tab the problem with that is is if you uh, click on one link at Heimdall and then you want to open up something else as well it's going to basically go through and change whatever you had already opened in the previous tab uh, to whatever you just clicked on. So I choose to set mine to open in a new tab the way any button that I click on on Heimdall uh, it will open in a new tab. But that's pretty much it for the configuration. Let's go ahead and move over to the last step and we'll just kind of walk through adding some devices into Heimdall.
All right, so as you can see here, we have the Google search bar at the top now, but we still don't have anything added. So we're gonna go down here, we'll click the little list icon here, and we'll select some items to add. Uh, so let's see, for the first one, let's just add my uh, Proxmox admin page. And if you basically type in Proxmox as the application name, it'll probably pull that in by default because it already knows the application that you're wanting to use. And then at that point, you can just set it to whatever the URL is for Proxmox uh, web page. We'll put that in here and then let's go ahead and add another one. We'll add Plex. And as you can see, when I start typing Plex out, Plex comes up in the drop dropdown. Uh, and then, of course, all you need to do is put in the URL to your Plex server. Um, just to add one more and, and to show you what some of the options are. If you go ahead and click on application type, and as you scroll down through here, you can see all the different ones that are predefined within Heimdall. There are tons of applications there. And of course, if you don't see one that you have on your list, you can create a custom one and even add your own image to make the button look just like all of the rest. We'll add Home Assistant here. Put in the path to my Home Assistant server. Go ahead and save that. And of course now we got three different icons. Uh, they all work pretty well. We'll click on Proxmox as you can see here. Um, it will pop up and there it is. Easy peasy. That's all you have to do. If we roll back, to the Heimdall page, and I'm just going to try out the Google search bar at the top. We'll just do a search for Heimdall and Docker. And as you can see here, it opens up a new tab, and of course, there is Heimdall right there. Came right up, no issues whatsoever. That's the end of the video, guys. Again, this was something I just ran across, I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, again, I know you can use bookmarks uh, in your web browser, but I really like the way this is clean and looks pretty good. You can customize it just enough to make it the way you want it to. And of course, the buttons are easy to click on and they all work pretty well. But again, that's the end of the video, guys. Uh, let's do a quick run through of everything we covered in this video. So of course, for starters, we installed Heimdall in Docker, and as that little twist, like I said, we installed it using Portainer Stacks versus Docker Compose. Once we did that, we went over some configuration uh, that was possible there uh, for Heimdall. And then lastly, I just showed you how to add some of those uh, admin URLs around your house uh, to Heimdall and showed you how easy that was. But that's pretty much it. As always, I wanna thank everybody for donating to my Buy Me A Coffee link. Every little bit helps. Um, if you haven't had a chance, jump over to my Spring Merchandise page and check out all the Burns Home Automation merchandise. And again, if you're looking for VPN service, IP Vanish is the way to go. Check them out. Uh, I have the link in the description below. Uh, they offer some great deals. You definitely wanna check those out. Also, if you are interested in buying or selling stock, create a Robinhood account using the link in my description below. Both get free shares of stock, so that's pretty cool as well. If you like the video, please subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments below. As always, if there are any videos out there that you would like to see that I don't already have out there, let me know in the comments as well, and I'll see if I can't get something put together for you guys. Otherwise, I'll see you guys around.